to have babies or not? This is a tough question. Once babies come out, no return. Today we have Miss Why and Miss Why Not to fight, <coughs> to argue with each other on this topic. So pick up your side, find your answer. Ready? Go! Birth is extinctive on human species and a healthy man at between 15 to 45 and any healthy women and between 15 at 35. As long as they would love to cooperate with each other, babies can be born. Men between 15 to 45 and women between 15 to 35. The age limit on different gender makes this important life decision harder than young women who are able to bear offspring than young men. Thanks to the rise of feminism, nowadays in more and more countries, women no longer find their social value based on childbirth. They go to school and they go to work afterwards to gain relatively equivalent social recognitions and social status as men do. However, this gender equality progress brings new challenges to women. Today, young women have to face a very realistic dilemma between having babies or stake on their career at their golden age. Women's golden childbearing age is at their 20s and 30s. After 32, the average fertility begins to decline. But at the same time, nowadays young women in such age seek for higher education or, or help position in their career. So for many, it's more fair to say they don't know how to keep the balance of a realistic life dilemma than they are unwilling to help wow, babies. you see women. But what about men, especially smart and successful men? Some of them are eager to pass down their excellent genes. For instance, Elon Musk. He and his wife had the first five babies through IVF, which helped them to give birth to two or three babies more than the traditional biological means. In addition, some couples love babies and they feel enjoyable to raise kids. Playing with kids allows parents to mirror themselves' growth and enjoy pure and simple happiness. Hmm, I see your point. Sadly, however, not all grown-ups are that lucky kids. Many who experience the childhood trauma, such as violence, abuse, neglect, and so on, refuse to help babies for cutting off the tragic loop. Hardly can I say this is the right way, but it's a canned idea from this unlucky grown As you mentioned, the couples who love babies. In the real world, there is always the other side of the coin. Many couples dislike babies or kids, especially their endless of need of caring, self-disorder, and noise. Well, um, two sides of corn. True. Actually, many people don't hold any personal preference. Instead, they just follow social convention or religious beliefs, which have brainwashed the <coughs> ingrained in themselves and their parents for years. Such traditional inertia is the keystone for them to continue to help babies just as their ancestors did. Or, on the other hand, such a traditional inertia can be the fuse, triggering ideological complex between parents and the children, between the younger generations and the elder ones, if they stick with their own ideas. Excuse me? Are you reading my lines? What? Uh, oh, sorry! Anyway, many people organize families just to follow the social conventions and the religious beliefs. But on the other hand, it also can be the fuse triggering social conflicts between the younger generation and the elder ones if they stick on their opinions. Nowadays, in big cities such as Beijing and Shanghai, many young couples, especially migrants who choose not to have babies, are fighting with their parents who have been brainwashed by the traditional conventions that not having babies is a huge shame. But no worries, in the next 20 years, when the young generations become the elder ones, problem will be resolved. Maybe at that time, China will embrace another democratic issue. Who knows? Well, sometimes for many couples, having babies is not that complicated. Females just get pregnant by accident, especially after going on vacation or drinking alcohol. <laughs> Who 
is the baby's father. So after 10 months of the pregnancy, if no abortion, a baby just comes out. Usually in such case, many parents would love to beautify this accident as the gift from the gods. Even for atheists, well, you know people would like to take gifts from anywhere. But what if the couples actually don't love each other so much? One reason for some couples who choose not to have babies is that they are not sure to have kids with the guy aside. That's then why did they get married? Right. That's a good question. Watch another video, why people get married. In some cases, many couples choose to have babies because they don't want to be left behind from their peers. Otherwise, they will feel isolated when out with others. So as for your parents, are you the topic which rescue their embarrassment and emptiness in their social network? Or, more naturally, many babies come to fulfill the emptiness and expand the family bondings between couples. Even in some families, children are the only bridge for organizing the family and securing parents' relationship. The role of the children sounds very manipulative. And more, haven't you heard the royal game? Haha, <laughs> that is so wanted! Does it exist today? Definitely. In royal or wealthy family, or, or in a tribe, or in the lowest social class, children can live in a very complicated social relationships, which involve too much fame and wealth, or family's expectation of burden. Well, but when we look at the middle class couples, many think families do the opposite. And their reasons is simple, because they realize a new life can be the huge responsibility and thought of their amateur thoughts of life. You know, it's an 18 year life mission. The most important thing for kids is not how luxury the life is, but how lovely the family is, including how much time parents keep company with the kids to grow, how much patience the parents are able to guide the kids to behave good. If they aim to be good parents, it's not easy. In terms of the responsibility, how about the responsibility about the demographic birth for the whole society? You know, an individual is the labor force, the taxpayer, and the customer to the economy. Nowadays, Africa is still on its peak of birth rate globally, on average 5 cases by a woman. Although India and China have been the largest population, their fertility rates are about a half, 2.5 cases by one woman. Europe and America have been further less for years. So as it goes in future, African and Asian will dominate the globe in some way. Indeed, if we look at the global history worldwide, actually the fertility rate has declined by 50% from 1950s to 2010s on average. This is why for years, for better well-beings in the whole society, many governments in different countries make policies to encourage or control the birth rate. For instance, after World War II, the Chinese government used to encourage people to have babies as many as more as possible to make a contribution to the labor force of the country. But in the early 1980s, it has changed to one-child policy for a better balance between economic development and demographic health. In 2010s, in the face of a declining fertility rate and the vanishing demographic bonus, the government has allowed the young people who have been born under the one-child policy to have two babies. Other countries such as the UK, the United States, Canada, and Russia, the cases are not so turbulent as the Chinese ones. But after World War II and the baby boom, the government has been working hard for encouraging people to have more babies. So this is why today, some people choose to make contributions on the demographic growth. Otherwise, human beings will extinct eventually before we are able to migrate to Mars. That is what I'm going to argue with. As the dominant species on the Earth, there are over 7 billion human beings for now. If the population continues to grow, according to scientists, we have to offer more 70% grains to feed 80 billion population in 2050. Also, we are in danger of the water crisis. Nowadays, worldwide, 
There are one tenth population haunted with the undrinkable water nightmare. Never will you face it because the water resources distribute so unevenly. We are not only the citizens in one country, also, we are the citizens of the earth. If having babies makes a contribution to one country, then not having babies to our planet. Have babies or not, what's your opinion?